Hello, everybody. I'm Huell Hauser. And here it is about 2 o'clock on a beautiful Monday afternoon here in Los Angeles. And we're here to spend some time at the bench. Now, you know how the bench usually works. We'll find a bench somewhere, either in a park or a playground or a school or a bus bench or a bench out at a pier by the, by the ocean. And we'll position ourselves there and talk with whoever comes along about whatever they want to talk about. There are no rules whatsoever, and we always end up meeting a lot of nice people and learning a lot about our city and about their lives. Well, today, since there are no rules for the bench, uh, we're changing the rules, even though there aren't any. And we've come to a specific bench, and we know who we're going to meet here. Now, we're not sure exactly everything we're going to talk about, but you're going to meet a father and his son and find out about their business together, their lives together, their family story. I think we're all in for a real treat. And as always, all of this conversation, everything we're going to learn today is going to take place right here in the vicinity of this bench. The Bench is brought to you by the California Community Foundation endowing Southern California's future since 1915. Okay, I guess we should start off by introducing you all. This is Franco and Giovanni Skeelan, and father, son here. And uh, Franco, you sent me an email a couple of days ago and said what? Basically, that uh, my father and I have a piano restoration shop in North Hollywood, California. It's called Precision Piano. And we've been running it together now for about five years. Uh, and we restore all types of pianos, old, new, used, abused. <laughs> we, we run the gamut here. And it all comes in, and uh, we try and take care of it. And you suggested that we come out and spend a day with you to learn not only the, the technical aspects of what you do, but a little bit about the family dynamics, because that's part of the story here as well, isn't it? Yeah, my, my father um, has been doing pianos all his life. He learned from his uncle in Italy. And uh, I started picking it up when I was about nine years old. Uh, I would come to either my father in the garage and he'd be having actions in there that I'd be cleaning and polishing parts and stuff that um, it didn't require a lot of skill, but, but it kind of introduced me to the whole genre of piano and piano technology and working. So you didn't really start off doing the glamour side of the business? Uh, no, no, definitely <laughs> not. It was the, definitely the grunt work. <laughs> well, what kind of a worker was he as a small boy? He was very, very interested. He always liked pianos. You know, he, he, inter he liked my business, and that's why I always was hoping he was going to follow me. Now, you know, now, now, did you start off as a young boy yourself? Yes, uh -huh. right after the high school, because in Italy, you know, the, the, after the war and everything, things were very bad. And then, then unemployment and things, so I, I didn't know what actually what I could do. Going to continue studying would be impossible because the family was very poor. And my uncle, which he was working for a piano company, they were making pianos before World War II, he told me, why don't you get in this, this kind of business, you know? And so you try to make a decent living. I don't know if it was a decent, <laughs> decent living because people didn't have enough money in those days, you know? But I said, well, let's try it. And I always liked music. I learned piano when I was nine years old, like he did. And so, you know, I just said, let's try it. And uh, I went into the business, and uh, from there on, I just uh, I, I learned from scratch. Because over there, the first thing, you have a different system than here. You had to really start an apprentice from nothing. You had to start sweeping the floor for two, three months, you know, keeping the glue hot. And because those days, used to use hot glues and stuff like that. So now, wait a minute. You started off fairly well, then. You didn't have to do any of that kind of stuff. Yeah, you, well, I did sweep the floor, yeah. I, but we, we didn't use hot hide glue. That was not part of my uh, repertoire. OK, so after you worked up from the hot glue, how long did it take you to really get a feel of, of what working with pianos is all about. It took me, oh, and after six months more, they started let me take pianos apart slowly. Then and it took me about three or four years before that because as an apprentice, for two years, you had to be on an apprentice anyway. 
Now they change. Over there, things are a lot easier. But in those days, for two years, you couldn't do anything, just learning, keep learning. And after that, you are a full apprentice, and then you can start getting your, like a regular regular worker, you know, that you know what you're doing, actually. And then slowly, it took, it took many years. After five years, I could say I was uh, pretty good. So about five years <laughs> of on-the-job on the training. The yes, training and, the old, and doing things, and they would let me do only certain things. Because the boss was very, very difficult <laughs> gentleman, <laughs> and uh, old style, you know, and uh, didn't want anything modern. Everything has to be done with old, you know, by hand mostly. So you learn the thing very slowly. Well, now this, well. this looking at your shop here, this looks very old-fashioned in a way. It do, I mean, it doesn't look like there's a lot of. I know. I'm sure you use modern techniques, but. It's a, it's a very small kind of a hands-on place. It, it, that's the way pianos are. If you look at a piano, uh, it just gives you that throwback feel. Uh, this is things that were done hundreds, a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the beauty of the piano. It has not changed its basic shape in over a hundred years. Do you have pianos in here today that are a hundred years old? We have a chickering in the back that was made in 1898. Can we go back there and take a look at it? And when you talk about working on a piano that's a hundred years old, now wait a minute, where are we going? Which piano are we? This one in the back. We, this, we call this the bowels. This is the back. We're going back into the bowels. Oh, look at this. This is beautiful. Now this is this doesn't look like it needs anything done to it. Uh, this piano was pretty much a disaster when it came in. Uh, it did not play at all. There was no tone on the piano to speak of. Uh, it had weathered a hundred years pretty badly. Um, this piano comes complete also now with a new soundboard, uh, which is basically the heart and tone of the instrument. The piano that you're standing right in front of now on its side has had oh one my removed. Gosh, look at this, Louis, over here. Not this one. This one over here. This is the. This is. You wouldn't even know hardly this was a piano. Th this has been gutted. This is also a, a Steinway. It was made in 1915, um, and the soundboard had basically reversed its crown and went belly under and you would pluck a string on this particular piano and you would get just a thud of a sound. Now what do you do? Just gut these? Well wait a minute, here is part of the piano on top of a shelf over here. That's, that's the action of a piano. Keyboard. The and action? The yes, that's the keyboard. That's, uh -huh. that's the actual keys of the piano. Uh, that's out of a, uh, another Steinway. Um, this is part of a sliding mechanism that actually comes out of the instrument. Um, this is what the pianist plays, this is what the pianist feels, this is what he can translate into the piano to get what he wants back out of it. It's basically different from the body. It's a separate entity. And every manufacturer makes them differently and has their own idea of how it should actually feel. But the body is important as well, isn't it? Doesn't that help a lot for the tone or is that just all show? The, no, the body of the piano is actually the most important part of it because that's what actually produces the sound. You always hear people talking about it has that Steinway sound, it has that Baldwin sound, the Yamaha sound. It's all particular to every type of instrument and a lot of times there's no right or wrong about the sound. You have certain parameters to deal with but you want to have as good a construction as possible to get as much singing tone out of the instrument yeah. as you can. And the soundboard in particular is the most important part because it's what gives you the sound. And it must make you feel awfully good to take a piano that comes in here in a mess oh, yeah. <laughs> and end up, what, months later does it take? Several months, four, five, six months sometimes, even more. And because it, you know, it takes such a long time, you have to let the, the wood cure and the glue cure and everything. So it really takes a long time. There's not something you're going to do it now and slap it together. We don't do that. Now, do the so, people who bring you the pianos understand that they've they got to leave them here? Oh, why, wait a minute, why are you laughing? Oh, they, they, sometimes they understand uh, a bit, but you tell them it's a three to six month job at the worst case scenario. It's, it's that long when you're doing the major work. Um, they kind of balk at it, and, and you, you tell them you can't rush this. I mean, it, it, took over, it takes over a year to make a handmade piano from scratch. So to rebuild it properly and to spend that kind of time, we do everything ourselves. We don't, we don't sublet this stuff, um, and that's why it takes a long time to do it. So this is the whole company right here. This is, this is the company right here. How do you all work out your vacation time every year? Uh, that's, that's half the problem there. We don't get many of them. <laughs> We're basically... Do you, uh, do you work together on the same piano, or do you split the work up? You know, it's interesting. I call him the belly man. 
The belly man is the one that does the stringing. He makes the pin blocks, which is the... Here, what the, is this? Let's look at this, Louis. What, what is this down here? This is called the pin block. This is what uh, fails in almost 90% of pianos when they get old. The tuning pins get loose. People say, well, my last tuner came out and said, the tuning pins are loose. He can't tune it. So this is, the, this is what goes bad. This is called the tuning pin block, the pin plank, the rest plank. Um, he's the belly man. He makes this is these, his specialty. This is his specialty. He makes them by hand. He actually fits them onto the plate of the piano. He sits there with a hand file and a hand rasp for everything so it fits together. Uh, man, he's a madman. I mean, the guy. There's no machinery for something like that. No. You got to be done by hand. Really? really? Yeah. Oh yeah. You, you can use a little, you know, some machine or something, but like a router. But otherwise, most is done by hand. Of course, you have to drill the hole with the. We have some machines, you know, to drill it. But again, hands, that's what you had to do with. And your eyes and things. Because get a close-up of this man's hands, you'll see... Let's get a close-up of, of his hands. Years <laughs> of stringing. Well, but those are the hands of an artisan. Yeah, those are the yeah, hands of a correct. man who well, has... Yeah, that's a real one. I had a lot of... It's, it's a work by hand. You know, it's not something that you sit down and you write. I'm not a writer. <laughs> so well, let's take a look at your hands. Let's see how <laughs> far you've got to come. i got a few scars here coming up, but I'm not the big stringer in the family. He's... He's the man that can string a piano like that and, and really turn coils, turn wire. Now, Th the, this is... This is a baby piano. This uh -huh. is a little one. We it's left it out in the rain and it shrunk a little bit. <laughs> a baby <laughs> piano. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, uh, how many notes does it have? 64. It's 64 notes. Mm -hmm. A normal grand piano has 88. Yes. This and is, this one is one, one that's one. really, you've just yeah. got the body restored, but you've still got all the, the innards to put back in it. The this plate, is a Kimball. The plate, that's the plate over there. And what, uh, right there by the yeah. wall? Then it's gonna be installed in here with a pin block in here, and then we put the strings, and then we put the dampers, and then we put the action, then with the hammer, and everything goes then, you know, step by step. Wow. And it takes time. We have it's a great, great working time. relationship. He does, he works on the bodies of the pianos, and I spend a lot of time doing the actions. I'm, I'm an action man. I, I, I like to get my hands on the mechanisms of the piano and put all the parts together. This one I wanted to pull apart and show you. Well, this um, one looks like it's almost finished This here. one is finished. This is completed. And I had a couple of pictures to show you of what this came in looking like. Oh, my gosh. This one had uh, a bunch of rats living in it for years and years. Literally rats? Rats uh, living in this piano. Looks like and they had been eaten on the, they made the, the stuffing. Yeah. They, they actually ate all of the action parts. All the felts off the action were, were gone. And there was really literally nothing left of the action that I could work with. Um, it, it was unbelievable. This was the worst piano we had ever seen. And it's a Mason and Hamlin, which is a handmade instrument from the 20s, five foot three, very rare. And we had no hope. I mean, we just figured this was gonna be just the dog. And it came out so nice, we, we just can't believe it. We're so tickled pink about so it. So this means literally there is no such thing as a lost cause as far as a piano goes, as far as you all are concerned. Okay. Everything is, is potentially retrievable. It, 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 there are some pianos that were made during the Depression and, and some early make pianos that we wouldn't even touch. <laughs> but uh, a brand name piano like a Mason and Hamlin, which has the history and the, and the technology behind it, those are the kind of pianos that you see and you say, oh yes, we can, we can do something with it. I'm looking over your shoulder. Now this looks like a, a basic workbench this is over our, here. This is our shared workbench. What happens over here? This Come on over and explain to us what what this is all about. This is an upright action. They, we used, you know, the different kind of a vertical piano. So that uh, we replaced the hammers because this was belong to school and uh, they So were you've out. replaced all of the these hammers. hammers. One by one, you just put new ones because the old ones were completely gone. So, the, so this the, is all new wood? Uh, yeah. The, the all hammers, handmade? Yeah, the hammer, yeah, they were made in the factory that we just installed them. But you know, we had to put them exactly the way it was before because they a little difference in, in in, uh, in an angle, they will, will create a tone difference. So they have to be done exactly like, they're, like the originals. So everything has a very meticulous, you know, it takes a lot of time and patience and, and do it right. Actually, <laughs> it's probably a lot of trial and error in those early days of uh, learning, isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, a lot. Well, there are some, you know, there are some piano that are also designed badly. So sometimes uh, we modify them, we change them. Like you can a, make them better. Make them, definitely make them better, oh yes.
There are a lot of pianos that are not done right, and then, you know, because they're different in it. After the Depression, they started going downhill. Really? And tried to save money, I guess, or something. And, but, uh, you know, so many pianos that were kind of bad. But we can still fix them up and uh, replace them with good parts and uh, modifying the, the geometry of the action. Uh, he, he's this? the expert. This is out of that Baldwin in the back. This can we pick that up so Louie can get a... This oh. is typical. Old piano. We might want to turn it this way. Yeah. And get an eye on it. You can see how dark the woods are. Um, this piano has been used a lot, and all new parts are going to go on this action completely. Uh, new hammer. These are the hammers that we're doing for it. Oh, right here. Uh, yeah. These are in the call right now, and what I'm in the process of doing. You can see all the the shavings of it. We're trying to uh, file them down, and what we're going to get eventually is this hammer on the side. We're going to get this diamond shaped more than it is and that's done by filing and then we're going to shape a tail drill a hole for the bore uh, and trim it down so that it fits for this particular action we need to get it to this point you know when you all talk about pianos and the way you make them the way you repair them the work you do on them you're really using words and terminology that for most of us is, is almost sounds like a foreign language. Words that we don't, we don't hear every day. That, that, that's the hardest part that we find when we, when we talk to people about their piano or go out and do an estimate for them is to convey what we want to do with the instrument. So a lot of times we invite them to come to the shop and say, well, you have a Steinway B. We want you to come over and play one that we just finished or go to this dealer showroom and play it that we just finished. And that's what we can do for you once we've taken a look and see that it has that potential. And we'll let you know exactly what procedure would be recommended on your piano. Yeah. It's, it's, seeing is better than anything, and playing it is what is the, the bottom line for everybody. Are there a lot of pianos out there that need work? Oh, yes. <laughs> no awful lot. <laughs> but most of the time, people don't want to spend the money. They tell. Obviously, because it, it requires a lot, of, you know, a lot of money because the parts are expensive and a lot of labor. It's very labor intensive. You know. But and for a lot of people, pianos are a very important heirloom, something that's been America, a part of their family. That's what I found coming in this country. The main thing, when I figured I moved in this country in 1960, so I said, well, probably I'm going to fix the cabinets or something like that. You know, I never thought about pianos. But I, at that time, I moved in, in Kansas City, Missouri, and I went to work for a piano company, and I found out there's a lot of pianos here. And I found out that people love pianos. And people, I have piano for generation. They pass it down to, like, that 1898, 1898 uh, chick ring. And so that's why it really people really want to have them done properly, and they, they don't mind to spend the money and do it right. You know, and then uh, I, do, I love this. I, I had an instance, several instances, and people that they would try the piano. We had, after we were done, the woman came in, and she started crying. <laughs> and I was playing the piano for her. I said, what happened? She said, it's so beautiful. I said, I couldn't believe it. You brought it back to life. You know, it's, you know it was something. It's true. It's no baloney. <laughs> so actually, that's really, she really loved it. And she, they have it, okay, now. Well, that and is that what you're doing. You're bringing them pride. back yeah. to life. Yes, and they gave me a great pride, and then he did the same thing. So sometimes we, we listen to the piano, and I tell them, boy, look at this. It's amazing. How they come up. It's absolutely amazing. And uh, with some, we see them. We, are, we already know the piano has potential. Sometimes I tell the people, don't spend the money because this is not worth it. It's not a question. I'm not in for the money, really. I'm not in because I want to do it right. And he's the same. Which is, that's what I like. We're not going to become millionaires doing no this. Way. That's for sure. Yeah, We're going to work long, hard hours. And, and it's, it's more of a satisfaction of, of, of spending the time to, you know, we, we get in arguments here all the time. But we're, we'll do it this way. No, we're going to do it this way. And, and I think we have two minds that, that work together, and we can decipher what we're going to do with the instrument. And we argue about it, but then we come to a conclusion this is the way to do it, and it oh, works. And do you realize how blessed you are as a family, number one, to be doing something for your life's work that you truly love, and number two, and I guess even more as just as important, is to be doing it as a father and as a son Ooh. together. It's, I, you know, I, I have so much respect for my father that I mean, he, he doesn't know, and I don't tell him enough, and I know that I don't, but he's, he's absolutely uh, a true craftsman, and there's not a lot of people that are, that are craftsmen anymore. I mean, it, and it's, I think it's very special, and, and uh, I appreciate him very much.
Yeah. And what do you feel about your son carrying on? Well, Was there a moment when you didn't think he might stay in the family business? Well, for, you know, when, was, when he was young, you know, how this school, the thing like that, I figured maybe he want to go to college and think that he was thinking, but then he said, no, he just wanted to do this. And that made me very, very happy because I knew, I knew how good he was and I knew he, he loved pianos and so I, said, I knew he was going to be okay. So I'm very proud of him. He's really, you know, he makes me very, very happy and proud and knowing that uh, he's going to go on with him and you know and uh, you know also make a lot of people happy by fixing pianos properly that's that's <laughs> one of the blessings of the business yes. is that uh, i go out and also tune pianos and, and work in the home um and um i go out and i'll tune a piano that hasn't been tuned for five to ten years i mean it's absolutely incredibly out of tune you can't decipher notes and you you bring it back it may have been a used piano they just bought and you you voice it to a certain specification that they want and you they the people try and convey to you what they want the piano to sound like they want it mellow they want it bright um, and when you can do that for them, they're like, you know, no one's ever been able to do that to this piano, and you did. And I've had many times people tell me that, and uh, and makes you feel good. I mean, you you go away and you you're ready to do another piano, and that's that's the beauty of it. There's hardly any day I don't re I, I regret this. And it's so obvious that both of you take such great pride mm -hmm. in what you do of too. Of course, well, we do. That's why we refuse to do something that we know is not going to come out right, because we know that sometimes pianos that um, they're not worth it. And then we, we and we are not, we are not, not we are not gonna like it. We had to like what we're doing. <laughs> if the sure. piano is just a total wreck, and then we know, we tell them. Yeah. I tell them, I'm sorry, but I don't want to do it. Give it to somebody else. Somebody might do it just because they want the money. <laughs> I don't, I'm not that money hungry. I don't want it. It's not a question of, you know, I know what I can do, and I'm, he knows the same thing. Well, now, wait a minute. You do want to make a living out of this we, thing, yes, though. Yes, but <laughs> don't make it sound too esoteric. <laughs> no, it's, it's not esoteric. No, it's no. just it, there's no satisfaction in working on something that's not going to be any better than when it came in. And I mean... And, you know, the bottom line is they're going to call me in six months and say, you know, it doesn't stay in tune. It doesn't sound good. My, you know, my friend just bought a brand new Yamaha. It doesn't sound anything is like that piano. It, well, we told you to begin with, it wasn't that kind of piano. You know, you wanted a piano-shaped object. You know, we call them PSOs. Now, see, you're the octave level of your voice just went up twice. It's, you're it's, you're it's, getting this Italian kind of a thing going that's, here. That's when the arguments yeah. start. We start flying here. and, yeah. and uh, Do you all get in... Uh, 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 he no, did, don't, uh, I don't mean arguments, but... No, he has a temper. you got to ask our good. neighbors. I don't know. We, they probably hear <laughs> He's got a temper? <laughs> he does have a temper. <laughs> does he so get I'm mad at the piano or mad at you? No, so it's both. <laughs> no, but no, sometimes... It's not that you know, bad. No, it's not that bad. But, uh, you know, we do argue sometimes, and then, but uh, then we always... Uh, we always uh, like each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like him. He's okay. You know. Well, let's get a nice shot of father and son here together. I tell you what... This has been everything I hoped it would be. I think we've all learned a lot about pianos and how to repair them and tune them and care for them and love for them, but we've also met uh, this father and son who are working together, shouting at each other from time to time. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a wonderful uh, experience. It was well, been a, it's you. been a delight. Yeah, thank you, you for sending me that email well, and inviting me to come out here. It's a pleasure to have you here. Yeah. It's you. been, uh, I wish I had a piano to bring you. Oh. There you go. We'll get you one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>